Today we're going to build a DIY version of the EB240. This is a solar generator we've tested in the past and it has a 2400 watt hour battery, but it does not have lithium iron phosphate cells. And luckily it's easy to make this even cheaper because the inverter output and solar input is limited. So we're going to make a system with the same exact features, but for much cheaper, but with lithium iron phosphate. So we'll have double or triple the cycle life of this. So first we need a battery. And for this build, we're going to use Lysian 280 amp hour cells with a Dali BMS and a milk crate. This is probably the easiest battery that you can build and it's super cheap. So for $588, you get 3,584 watt hours, which is 1,100 watt hours more than this system already. So all we need to do is add an inverter and solar charge controller to this battery. And to make it really simple, we're gonna use an all-in-one by MPP Solar. And for $400, you get a 1,000 watt pure sine wave inverter and a 500 watt solar charge controller. And it also has a 20 amp AC charger. So as long as we connect this to this battery will be set we'll have something that's better than that unit and it takes only minutes to install so this should be really fun and this battery has a positive and a negative so we need to connect these to the DC input and we have a negative on the negative side and a positive on the positive side positive. and because there's not a lot going on on this system I'm not going to add a second milk crate if we were using inverters and other chargers we would have to put them together in a safe enclosure but because we don't have that much going on here I'm just going to slap it on the top of this milk crate and what is the best way to mount this so I drilled two holes through the milk crate and we're going to bolt it down And that is a very secure mount. Be sure to buy the more expensive milk crates. This one is really strong. Now we need to mount this side, but there's little holes so we can use self-tapping screws. I'm telling you guys, these milk crates are magical. So this thing is not going anywhere, my guys. I was scared it was not gonna hold this well, but this is great. All right, so now we need to connect the inverter charger to our battery. And this BMS does have overcurrent protection, but I think it would be a smart idea to add our own. So 1000 divided by 12.8 is 78 amps. 78 times 1.25 is 97 amps. So a 100 amp fuse or circuit breaker would be ideal. And right now I only have a 30, a 70, and 80. So we're gonna use the 80, but if you guys are building this at home, use a 100 amp. But where should we mount this? So I'm having a tough time mounting the circuit breaker. I still wanna be able to use the handholds and I do not want anything protruding out on the side, but I do have conductors going in and out of this inverter charger. So we're gonna to have to mount it on this side of the milk crate. But keep in mind that these need to be mounted in a solid fashion. You do not want these wiggling off or protruding excessively. You want them protected, but able to function properly. That actually looks pretty good. Now we need a conductor from here to the positive DC input. If we bend it just like this, it should work out. I'm using four gauge wire pure copper welding cable, which is total overkill for this. By the way, this is my favorite crimper ever. I use it every day and it works perfectly. Now we need to connect the DC input to this negative cable, but this thing is a monster. Then we're gonna push the excess back inside of the milk crate. Or we could run it over here and then push it inside. Okay, we'll do that. So now the negative conductor is run through the milk crate and out on this side. We're gonna use this large bolt to connect these two together. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, this is great. This is actually pretty nice, guys. I was not expecting this. I'm just trying to make it as cheap as possible. I'm pretty happy when it looks good too. And this is a typical all-in-one system with a PV input where you connect the solar panels up here and you have an AC output with these terminals right here and then an AC line input so that you can use the AC charger up here. So let's attach all of those cables real quick. And I found it. So we have a male prong for the AC input and a surge strip for the AC output. Output. Please watch my beginner videos if you don't know how to do the basics. If you want to know more about these all-in-one systems, I have a page on my website that shows how to use them. 
So first we're gonna do the AC output because it's on the bottom, but to ensure that this inverter is powered down, I'm going to open the circuit breaker and check the screen and make sure that it's off. And on the case it shows we have ground, live, and neutral. So we're gonna have green, black, and white. Now we're gonna repeat the procedure for the line input. So we have a ground, line, and neutral. So again, ground, line, neutral. This one doesn't have much room to work with, so I'm gonna put all three conductors in at the same time. So let's turn it on and test out the AC charger. We're just gonna plug this into a wall outlet. Check it out, guys. We're charging at 20 amps into this battery from AC power. Now we can test the AC output. So now we have a 500 watt light. Nice. And a 250 watt light. We're pulling 65 amps. We can power this for a very long time. This battery is massive. Now let's go outside and connect this to some solar panels. Now this thing's like 60 pounds. This is ridiculous. So on this side of my backyard, I have a solar array for charging my golf cart. This has a voltage open circuit of 84 volts. And I added an XT60 connector so we can connect to this array. We are charging off of solar now. What's nice about using this all-in-one system is the MPPT's max open circuit voltage is 102 volts. Compare that to the EB240, which is like 50 or 60 volts. So you're getting almost double the voltage open circuit capacity. That means you can have all of your panels in series. This can only handle 500 watts, so having five 100 watt panels in series should work great. But right now we are charging, but it is charging very slowly. The sun just came up right now. And I really don't wanna wait three hours for it to come up, so let's go back inside the lab. So let's do a quick price comparison. This thing is $1,600. And now our Milk Crate Systems battery and inverter cost $987. Add the circuit breaker in and the cables and it's about $1,050. So this lasts two to three times as longer. It has a thousand watt hours more than this one. And the solar input can handle 102 volts open circuit. So pretty darn incredible. But this does have a USB charger and cigarette lighter adapter. So if you want to add $20 to this system, you could add these features as well. But that's about it. I mean, geez, you have a full size system right here. For van dwellers, this would be perfect. You can charge it with your alternator. You can have a shore power plug. You have an AC output to run your laptop and lights and other things. And you could put 500 watts on the roof of your vehicle. So this is a pretty nice system. And you can actually work on it. But one downside of my system is it's pretty heavy. It's like 10 or 15 pounds more than this because we have 1000 watt hours more and we're using lithium iron phosphate. So that's probably the only big downside. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please let me know if you have any questions below. If you wanna learn more about these all-in-one units, I have some schematics on my website and more information on how to use them. If you wanna know more about this super cheap battery, I'll also have a link below for that as well. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.